He commands, are they the best way to format text? Control B, bold. Control I, italic. Control U, underline. Control square bracket, increase font by one point. Left square bracket, decrease font by one point. Control A, select all. So key commands are, in my view, a quicker way or the quickest way to format text. My view is the longer your hand is on the keyboard, the quicker you're going to be. So welcome to this session on Word. My name's Steve, and I'm going to look at some of the common key commands in Word. And I'm also going to look at how to create your own key command if you're doing something over and over again. So first of all, if I just close this document down, Control W, there's a key command. And you see it says save and don't save. Well, I'm going to click on the N, which is this underscore there, which means I don't want to save it. The letter N on the keyboard, then it comes back to this document that I've already got op open, where it's telling me what each letter in the alphabet does if I hold the control key down. So every letter does something. So I want to go through some of these, and then you've got some other ones down the bottom there, some alt keys and shift keys and things like that that you can do. I'm not going to go through every single one, but this is obviously somewhere where you can pause and have a look at what they do, and then I'll go through some of the main the main ones. So let me just get a new document, new document, Control N. That's the same one in all Microsoft stuff, and this is what I want to do: equals rand with an open and close bracket on it like that. When I press Enter, there it's going to give me some random text, which is great. And let's go for this. So if I highlight a line now it's not a key command that but this is called the selection area if you double click in the selection area it will highlight a paragraph if you click once it will highlight the line and if you triple click it highlights the whole document now let me just uh, go through a few of the common ones so i've highlighted some text control b bold control i underline control u Underline control I italic, should I say? They're, they're quite common. And then copy and paste would be control C, copy. And if I click down to the end of this paragraph, control V, paste, that will paste it in there. Now, what I find a really useful key command, if I just get to the bottom of this and just type my name, Steve Saxton, let's just change this. If I highlight that, and do control B, control I, control U. So I've changed it. I'm going to change the font size. Now that key command is control and square bracket. Right square bracket will increase the font. Left square bracket will decrease it one point at a time. You can see that happening up at the size box at the top there. I'm on 19. So I've done quite a few different key commands there, four altogether. Now if I click at the end of this and do this key command, control space bar. That will put that text back to its default setting. So it's no longer bold, italic, and 19 point, and underlined, is back to the default. So control space bar will reset anything back to its normal font and size. Now control Z is a very common one. Undo, control Y, redo. So those two both work in conjunction with each other that's stopping you going up there to click on the arrows you don't have to do that because that's getting the mouse now if i do control a that will select the whole document got to be careful with that one because if you type everything goes control z undo now if i put some numbers on these paragraphs if i just make a space and just open these up a little bit now, if I highlight these two paragraphs and just set them either to a bullet list or a numbered list, so I'll go for a one, two, three list. So let's put that in there. Now, if I click into this particular paragraph and do Control Q, that resets the paragraph, takes the number off. And if I click on that one, Control Q will take that one off as well. Now, I've still got an indent on. You see the indent marker at the top there. To get rid of that indent, I could do Control Shift M. We'll get rid of the indents. Control Shift M, get rid of that. Now the key command to put an indent on is just Control and M. Every time I do M, it will indent across, and you can see it at the top there. Control Q to bring that back, and then Control Shift N if it doesn't come right back. So Control 
M indent, control shift M knocks it off. Control T, something you're probably not going to do manually yourself, is a hanging indent, which is what the actual number listed there. If I click on that, you can see the indent there is hanging. There's your first line, and there's your body of your text. Now, if I do control A and then control space bar, everything goes back to the default text. Control Q resets paragraphs. Anyone that doesn't do it, do Control Shift M to bring it back across. So that's just a quick look at how you can utilize some of the key commands that you get in Word. Control G will go to find and replace. If I cancel that for a minute. Control H goes to the same box but a different tab. It's just going to replace. Cancel that off. So remember, every single letter in the alphabet does something. Now, Control X does cut. Control V, as I've already said, does paste. So those are some of them. But what happens if you want to do something or you do do something and it hasn't got a key command? Now, there are some key commands that are on the function keys. So, for example, if I just double click on this first paragraph and I want to change pace, if I do Shift F3, that's gone to capitals. And again, Shift F3, that's gone to um, just normal lower text. And Shift F3 puts it into sentence case again. Now that is the same as you going up to this tool and selecting these options. It just does sentence lower and uppercase. But that's what it does, Shift F3. And if you're on a laptop, you might have to hold the FN key down while you do that if it doesn't work. But as I said just a second ago, if you want to do your own, you have to do this. Now, I'm just going to make a space to give myself a title. There's heading one, heading two. I'm just going to edit this one slightly because I don't like that. I don't like it being blue. So I'll put that back to black. And I want that to be um, Roma. That's what I use that one. And I just want it to be 12 points. It can be bold. I'll let it be bold. No, what not looks. Like, yeah, ooh, let's not do bold. So that's the style I want. Heading two, and then you've got this option down there: automatic update, and then tick that option. Okay. So if I type introduction, that's the heading. Heading style two. You can see it there. Introduction heading style two. Now what I didn't edit was these spaces above and below which I definitely don't want so I'll just go back into that now to edit that you've got to go down to format paragraph get rid of that put that back to um, zero going the wrong way down to zero that one to zero 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 okay 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 to that so I've, not, I've now got that nice and neat but it's in bold now if I was doing that all the time you know I don't want to keep picking up there. I, I, I add a key command or create a key command for that. Now, the way you add your own key commands is this. You just need to get into Customize Ribbon, and you can do that by right-clicking on any tab or going into File Options, whichever one you want to do. I'm going to right-click, Customize Ribbon. And down the bottom there, you've got Keyboard Shortcuts, Customize. Now, there are hundreds and hundreds of options that you can select from that's the file tab so this all this sort of stuff you've got here and now some of them will have key commands already I'll come further down there you go so control p for print you've got all these key commands that's allocated to that but if i want to allocate a key command to heading style 2 i need to come right down the bottom of this top left hand list and find styles which is there and then i can see heading 2 so there's heading one, nothing's allocated. Heading two, nothing's alloc allocated. Now you've got to be careful that you don't use a key command that already exists. So usually I use Alt key, the Alt key as opposed to Control. So I'm going to go Alt two. It says it's not assigned. So that's great. So I can click assign. So Alt two for that one. And I'm going to go onto heading one and do Alt one so you actually physically have to press the key command on the keyboard for it to go in there you don't type that and then assign in that okay okay to that close that one off okay to that 
So now if I type another title, I'll just type my name, I'll go Steve. And now I know heading style one, which I said was alt one, has not been modified. So that's going to be, that's what it's going to do basically. That's a preview. But if I just do alt one, it does that geek command for me and that's put it on. And you can see that huge space before and a little space afterwards, which again, I don't really like. Now, if I put my name in this one, Steve, and highlight that and do Alt 2, that's just going to do a heading style 2, which hasn't got the spaces before and after. And what I would then do is press Enter. So if I do this on a new document, let's see if I've done this correctly now. So if I type Steve, highlight and do Alt 2, that hasn't picked up the changes that I did on there because I didn't tick the correct option. So it's still got the spaces. So it's, the key command's working, but the modifications didn't work because I didn't tick that. So I'll go into paragraph, put that back to zero, and that one back to zero. Going the wrong way. Zero, 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 zero. Okay. Automatic update based on this template. So that's what I should have done. Okay. Now, if I just get myself on just, is that heading two? That is heading two. What should happen now is when I press enter after that, it should come back into normal text, which it does do. It's gone into normal text. So if I just do that again, control N, I'm gonna go alt two this time, type in Steve, press and enter. So there's heading two, look, press and enter, normal text. Press and enter, going for Alt 1, type in Steve again, this is heading 1, press and enter, goes back to normal. So you can see that the, the headings, so that's remembered the spacing this time, I didn't change the spacing on that one. So that's how key commands work, there's lots of key commands that are preset, hundreds, and then there's ones you can do yourself if you're always doing the same sort of thing, you can just allocate a key command to the task. When you use your mouse to point at certain things like obvious ones like bold, the key command is listed there and you can see them coming in all the way across there. Paste, copy, key command, paste, and then format painter. Now that you're getting a bit over the top with that one, three, control, shift and C. And well, it's, it's whether you want to do the key command on there. Sometimes there's too many options. You can go into that and edit that to be an alt key, alt key command, which would be an easier option than remembering all that lot. And that's what I would do. If, and if, if I'm doing that all the time, I'm not having that key command too long. You want them sort of like, like control P, which is a preset one. If you wanted, um, you wanted to use letter P, you could use alt P for whatever paint pot, maybe what's that got? See, the paint pot hasn't got a key command, so you could use a key command for that and so on and so on. So that's all I want to talk about in this little video. Please subscribe and I'll catch you on the next one.